Thank you. Thank you very much uh, for this opportunity. Our chief guest, uh, Ambassador Uku Yatan, CS Minister of National Treasury and the Planning, CS is present, PS, State Department of Planning, the board members, uh, Mr. Sind, the country representative leading the UN family, Dr. Andemola, a country representative, uh, UNFPA, Maendrea Awanawake, Chairperson, uh, Rehab Muyo, Excellencies, ladies and gentlemen. In case you forget everything from my speech, as I was reflecting coming here, I said there are two theories. One theory that will affect celebration of Population Day like today, one, because of COVID-19 pandemic, we are either going to reduce the population because of the many deaths, we don't know because this disease is new and the car's health is always reminding that it evolves and we are learning on the way, so we are likely to lose in population. Or because of teenage pregnancies, we are likely to have overpopulation. You may prescribe to any theory and you take your path. I'm pleased to join you today as we celebrate the World Population Day themed putting the brakes on the COVID-19, how to safeguard health and rights of women and girls at the now. We are also launching the State of the World Population 2020, whose theme is Against My Will, defying the practices that harm women and girls and undermine equality. My team from the ministry, when they realized July 11 was a Saturday. In fact, learned by Secretary Gender, she told me, this you cannot delegate. I was traveling and I said, I will be here <laughs> because of the theme that leans uh, a lot on what we do in our ministry and also an opportunity to meet the many colleagues we work around in this space of gender equality and women empowerment. Celebrating World Population Day matters as it highlights the problem, problems associated with high population, which right now stands very close to 8 billion. Some of the problems are effect on the environment, right to health, including reproductive health, family planning, gender equality, and human rights. To tackle these challenges, Amut agency stakeholder and partnership are really necessary. Therefore, I commend the partners and agencies who have dedicated their resources, their time, energy to tackle these challenges by coming even to share the celebrations of today. Our chief guest, the COVID-19 pandemic has drastically affected the socioeconomic landscape of women and girls and other vulnerable groups. The crisis threatened socioeconomic gains realized over the years. Since the outbreak, there has been a sharp increase in the risk of domestic violence and intimate partner violence. In Kenya, teenage pregnancy has more or less remained unchanged uh, since 2008, with the national prevalence of 18%, which is one of the five teenage girls, in every one of the five teenage girls is either pregnant or as a baby. The situation has increased slightly, and our message is even one pregnancy is a concern to the nation because it contributes to one's poverty. As it has been said here before, Every time a girl gets pregnant, and years in schools are reduced, and it contributes towards the poverty of those families. The situation has, also, has worsened, and we have also seen many school girls and going girls are also have been subjected to female genital nutrition 
and child marriage due to closure of the schools and restrictions of movement. Since the outbreak chief guest of this pandemic, we have registered a worrying trends through the National Gender-Based Violence Helpline 1195 that my ministry operates on 24-7 basis with the help of Healthcare Assistance Kenya. By the end of March, GMPV cases had increased by 33%, and by the end of June, we were beyond 50%. That need to worry us. Regarding the increased gender-based violence, I wish to applaud this excellent the president for directing action on gender-based violence and rising cases of teenage pregnancies. This will strengthen the institution of the family and ensure safe spaces for women and girls. More importantly, His Excellency the President has directed the National Crime Research Center to investigate underlying causes and give an advisory that will initiate prosecution of all violators in, and indeed is an energizer to all of us who are working towards an equal world and an inclusive society. Our chief guest, faced with such dire situation of gender-based violence that, has compounded, that is compounded by COVID-19 pandemic, collective effort of stakeholders through multi-sectoral initiative that would include women and girls protection, and two, from all criminal offenses, two, empowerment with knowledge, skills, and resources, three, involvement and engagement in decision-making of women and girls in decision-making on matters that uh, pertain themselves. I'm happy to inform you that the government programs are using the whole of government approach. You can see the number of ministries represented here is already taking that path. However, with that vision of the president, we must have very specific goals that need to be achieved in year one, year two, and year three. It is our strong conviction that such an intervention will provide a multi-pronged response, create synergies, and the unity of purpose, bring different agencies comparative advantage, and contribute to achievements that are greater than the sum of individual effort of the stakeholder. Men and women and girls and all members of the society are further encouraged to exercise their agency in reporting, voicing it out, and shining a spotlight on those among us, us who endanger the safety, health, rights, and the dignity of women and girls. In conclusion, as chief guest, the challenges posed by COVID-19 pandemic offers also a huge opportunity to get to zero new cases of gender-based violence through enhanced multi-sectoral coordination and the partnership for better quality of life of the world population, a commitment we made during the ICPD 25. Finally, Chief Guest, I declare that we, all of us sitting in this room and the entire government, we have the will, we have the commitment, the inspiration and the good will from the national leadership, right from His Excellency the President, to make it happen. Let us do well by doing good in our population. I thank you and God bless you. <laughs>